This is very good news. A newspaper written in German, in the old German font known as Fraktur. There aren't many people around these days who can or want to try to read Fraktur, which was in use until roughly 1920 in Germany as well as amongst German Americans. You see the date on it here, Samstag den 6. Juni 1863. It's called Der Illinois Beobachter, the Illinois Observer. And you can, this is page two. You can see this, these heavy letters that have bled through from page one at the main masthead, E-O-B-A-C-H-T-E-R, showing through there. And the, here's the name. To us, that looks like B. Moulter. Can't really say, B. Maller. His name, the editor, that is, Herr Geber, was Valentine Walter. His great-granddaughter had six issues of this paper in her house in Indiana. She assumed that her great-grandfather had been a German merchant who took out ads in this paper and therefore had a few copies of it lying around to show his ads. She could not read her grandfather's name there. The Walter gave six issues of this paper to us last fall from 1863 and 64. There had been no known issues of it anywhere until that point. We are absolutely delighted to have this. There is a, a lead editorial about Lincoln in one of the issues. We're translating that now. But mostly it's local news. It was published, you maybe have spotted this, maybe not. Corner of Third and Piazza Streets in Alton, Illinois. The reason this gives us great hope in the Lincoln field, and this paper, by the way, ran from 1857 to 1866, started Democratic, shifted to Republican during the war, as was the case with a lot of Germans living in this part of the country. But no known copies of this had uh, ever been found until these few showed up here last fall. Well, Abraham Lincoln in 1859 bought a set of German types and a printing press and hired a man, a German named Dr. Theodor Canisius, to put out a weekly paper supporting the Republican Party in Springfield. This paper was called the uh, Illinois Staatsanzeiger, that is the sort of the state in, uh, informer is what that means really, the news about politics. And it ran, we have evidence from Lincoln's own letters for at least nine months until the point after he had been nominated to run, for the, uh, to run by the party. But we don't know when it ended. There are no copies at all of that paper either. So suddenly another one from Alton shows up and gives us hope that after 150 years, maybe somebody has one in their attic. If you know any old German people with boxes of newspapers in their attics, ask them about that. Here's another German effort uh, this came to us in the Taper Collection <clears throat> a little over two years ago. It is a very skillful portrait of the Lincoln deathbed scene. There's Mary Lincoln crying at his side, Robert Lincoln with his face buried in a handkerchief crying, Secretary of War Stanton right there looking more or less at the uh, painter. This was inscribed down there in the lower left. You can barely see it. Half of it's behind the frame. Gemalt von A. Cromer, 1867. Painted by A. Cromer. It's based precisely on a print that was an engraving that was made in Philadelphia by a German in 1865. And we don't know if Herr Cromer 
was living in Philadelphia or was living in Germany because there's some evidence that these prints of Lincoln's death were circulating in Europe also. Uh, we can't figure out who A. Cromer was, but I have identified an Adolf Cromer who was painting church murals in Bavaria about 30 years later. Cromer proves to be a much rarer name than I ever would have thought. And so here again, another example of the ongoing research that both fascinates us and confounds us. When Lincoln was killed in Ford's theater, the star actress on stage at the moment was Laura Keene, probably the best known actress in the country. She made her way very quickly up to the presidential box and sat in his chair and cradled his head in her lap while the doctors probed the wound. They didn't really know whether Lincoln had been stabbed or shot for a while. And bloodstains got onto her dress. Laura Keene came to Springfield the next year in 1866 and acted on stage. She never gave up that career. First she appeared in Sheridan play The Rivals, and the next night in Our American Cousin again. And she presented a small piece of her blood-stained dress to the people here in town who were organizing the building of the National Lincoln Monument, which is now known to us as the Lincoln Tomb. And so that piece of her dress came from her hand to the people of Springfield in 1866. And we have the piece of dress still downstairs in the vault. What was made then right away was this photograph on a little CDV card that anybody could buy, sold by J.A.W. Pittman, Springfield, Illinois. Piece of Laura Keene's dress. These proved to be very rare. Um, maybe people thought it was in poor taste to be selling a photograph like this. I'm not really sure but we're lucky to have it. We're getting close to the end here. This is a little reminder that those who lost the Civil War have um, sadness and memories too. There's the rebel flag. There's just a little bit of an inscription under the bottom here. It says, in memoriam, just as we have Lincoln and his tomb to, mem to memorialize, they have the Monitor and the Merrimack down here in a battle in Virginia that the Confederates won in the upper right. Uh, this came out two years after the war, same time more or less as that painting by Cromer of Lincoln's death. One still sees that flag in some parts of the country, by the way. in a more modern vein. <laughs> this is called Still Life with TV <laughs> by an artist named Tom Wesselman, painted in 1963. The original of it is owned by a private collector in New York, but we have this print of it that was recently donated to us. It's, it's very clever, I think. It's a sort of a modern turn on the Dutch master, old masters doing still life paintings in the old days in which there would be maybe a, a noble looking burgomeister or town official and there's a table full of, um, oh, a pitcher of wine and some flowers and some fresh bread. But here it's been updated. Instead of the wine, you have two bottles of Valentine's beer <laughs> and, and there's some flowers and here's a pear sliced open, um, no fish. Not sure about the red star and where that fits in. It reminds me of the gold star mothers. It's the same shape as the World War II uh, emblem for those who had lost sons in the war. And this having been painted just 18 years after World War II ended, I wonder if artist Wesselman still had that idea in mind. But instead of a church spire in Old Netherlands out the window, of course, there you have the Capitol building in Washington, although the TV is showing news from New York City. <laughs>